Is AI changing the game? What is the 2026 outlook for data engineering? To talk about the future, I actually have to take you back just a bit. I've been in this game for 25 years. I started out in customer service, moved up to help desk, and eventually became just the data guy before we even had titles like data engineer. Back then, I was building SQL servers, writing VB.NET front ends, and creating crystal reports. I've seen the industry move from on-prem SQL servers to Hadoop and Hive in the 2010s to the cloud orchestration with Airflow and now Lakehouse. The reason I bring this up isn't to brag about just how old I am, <laughs> which I am. It is because I've noticed a pattern. The technology changes every few years, but the fundamental traps we fall into stay the same. So for 2026, I'm not just going to give you a list of tools to learn. I'm going to tell you how the role itself is shifting based on what I'm seeing with my enterprise clients right this moment and how you can stay ahead of the curve and remain relevant as we move into the future. The first major trend for 2026 is the return of the generalist. Think about the last 10 years. We hyper-specialized. We split the data guy persona into data engineers, data scientists, BI analysts. And then we created this weird hybrid called analytics engineer. And let's be honest, sometimes those hybrid roles are incredibly frustrating. You get stuck in between engineers who won't give you access and analysts who think that you're just IT. But here is my prediction. The pendulum is swinging back. Why? Because of AI. As AI gets better at writing the boilerplate code, the Python, the SQL, the pure coder is going to become less valuable. The engineers who win in 2026 are the ones who have business acumen nested inside of all that. It's about communication. It's about understanding a specific industry or domain and translating what that machine does into real human language. We're going to see a reemergence of the engineer who starts with the business answer in mind, not just the pipeline architecture. Really think about it. Do you feel like you're doing more business translation lately? Or are you still 100% heads down coding? Now, let's get a little technical. Everyone says 2026 is about AI and data engineering, but they usually mean using Copilot to write code. I want to talk about the dangerous side of AI that no one really talks about, the context trap. We're seeing a push for text to SQL or allowing business users to ask questions directly to the data using tools like Databricks Assistant. The problem with that, business users don't provide real context. If you've been in this industry for long, you know that to be true. I've seen real scenarios where a user asks a vague question the AI generates a massive query, and then three things might happen. One, the cost spike. So on a serverless cluster, Databricks scales up to meet the demand of what's being asked. And suddenly that one query costs you five grand. Option number two is the crash. On a dedicated cluster, it uses all the workers, bringing all of your pipelines and streaming jobs to a grinding halt. And finally, option number three, your report is just wrong. This is where they claim that your dashboard is wrong because AI gave them a different number. Spoiler alert, they didn't filter out those invalid sales and AI used the bronze tables to come up with the answers. So the 2026 data engineer isn't just connecting data from one place to another. You are architecting safety. I'm advising clients to do two things. One, segment your clusters. Give the AI its own compute so it doesn't kill your production pipelines. Number two, the MCP server. This is the future. We're moving towards using model context protocol or MCP servers 
instead of the AI just hitting the database directly, it hits an API layer that we actually control, right? This manages the load and ensures the query actually makes sense before it even runs. In addition, you control what layer and what level of granularity gets returned. If you're a data architect, this is where you need to be looking. Trend number three, pruning the tree. This is the final piece of the 2026 outlook, and it is all about how you manage your time. We all know the pain of ad hoc requests. Can you pull this data for me? I need this for a meeting tomorrow. If you want to survive as a data engineer in 2026, you have to stop being a ticket taker. You have to learn how to prune the tree. Here's the analogy. If you keep on letting these little ad hoc branches grow, they suck the life out of the tree. You have to cut them off to let the tree grow stronger. I'm gonna tell you how to do that. One, redirect to self-service. If a request comes in, teach them to fish, teach them where the data lives so that they can export it themselves. You are teaching them not to view you as the API layer. Number two, pattern recognition. If you get the same request every month, that's not a task. That is a product. Automate it. Number three, revenue versus cost. You need to ruthlessly identify if a request is revenue driven, so you're helping sales maybe close deals, or is it cost cutting? So maybe you're saving 50 hours of manual work a month. If it's neither, then you need to learn the art of saying, not right now. Engineers who move into leadership are the ones who protect their time to build high value architecture, not the ones who close most JIRA tickets. The 2026 Outlook isn't just about faster streams or new tools. It is all about the generalist mindset blending engineering with business strategy, safe AI architecture, using MCP servers and segmentation to prevent cost explosions, and strategic pruning, escaping the ad hoc death spiral. I've been doing this for 25 years, and the one thing that keeps me in the game is that it changes just enough to keep me from getting bored. And this is the roadmap that I would use if I were starting over today.